when you do an exam, I will give you the conversion table here. Okay, these are the things we'll be given to you. And uh, I just don't feel it's necessary for you to memorize all those different terms and associate them with these multipliers and the quantities there. And uh, if you are doing these calculations and these conversions repeatedly, uh, many of them become familiar and you will naturally memorize them. But I do not require you to memorize everything in this table here. Just so you know, uh, we have different ways and different ways to represent a particular quantity when we use different terms there. Okay. So if I tell you the frequency of a radiation is uh, uh, 1.5 times 10 to the uh, times 10 to the 14 um, uh, hertz, then well, you need to know 10 to the 14th, 10 to the 15th there. Um, you need to know the assignment notation there. You need to be able to convert them back into the unit that we need uh, when you do calculations there. Okay, so talking about representing numbers there. In chemistry and in physics, uh, we sometimes use what we call scientific notation. Now, scientific notation is a way of representing very small or very large numbers. Now, when the numbers are, say, within 100 or 200 and something like that, we don't really need to use scientific notation. When you have large numbers there, sometimes it becomes tedious to figure out how many zeros we have in there. Give me an example there, large, large numbers, so a large print there. Okay. You measure the diameter first, and you end up with uh, one, two, seven, six, zero, zero, that's a lot of zeros, and you have to actually count all the digits there and trying to figure out um, the magnitude of this number. We can represent this number in what we call scientific notation. And uh, the correct form of the scientific notation for this number would be 1.276 times 10 to the 7. We know from the prefix multiplier, 10 to the 6 is a million. So we're talking about 10 million, the quantity in 10 million, so 1.276 times 10 to the the seventh meter. Okay, so this is a way to represent a large number, and of course we can use a sign of notation to represent very small numbers there. You measure, well we can't really measure that, we can calculate the diameter of a typical atom, and that's zero point, you have to count many, uh, the total number of zeros in here to understand how many, how small this number is. However, if you use scientific notation, we would do 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10 meter. And that's what we call an angstrom there. Okay. So that's the size of typical atom there. Now, when you look at these two numbers, there's something, they bear the same format. There's a coefficient, there's an exponential part of the number. Now, the difference here is that with the large number, a positive exponential number, with a small number, negative So we just need you to be able to recognize the, what we call the scientific notation. Okay, so scientific notation, there are two components in that number there. The coefficient part, you have to pay, another detail you have to pay attention to. The coefficient is a number that's greater than one, equal or greater than one, but less than 10. Okay, and in other words, the coefficient can only have one digit on the left side of the decimal point. You don't do 12.3 times 10 to the third for this particular number. You do 1.23 times 10 to the fourth. Okay. So the coefficient part, you can only have one digit on the left side of the decimal point. And that's a very important thing you need to remember. When we ask you to represent a particular number in scientific notation, if you do 12.3 times 10 to the third, that's incorrect. It's 1.23 times 10 to the fourth. Okay. So the scientific notation is written as a product of two numbers, coefficient multiplied by the exponential part, and then the coefficient is the number between 1 and 10. And the exponential part is 10 base and raised to an integer number of power. And the integer number can be either positive or negative, depends on the actual quantity. How do you determine when to use a positive number when to use a negative number. Now, if the decimal number is equal or greater than 10, then the exponential number is positive. Okay. If, the exponential, if the decimal number is less than 1, then the exponential number is uh, the power of 10 is going to be negative. So 
So basically, you're looking at the place of the decimal point. If it's greater than 10, you are trying to convert the number into scientific notation. You're trying to write the number. The coefficient has one digit to the left side of the decimal point, And you are basically moving the decimal point to the left. Okay. When you do that, well, you have to, in order to keep the number at the same value there, you have to multiply it by 10 to whatever number of times you move the decimal point, 10 raised to that many uh, number of times you move the decimal point, the same number uh, as an exponential number. Now, if you have a number that's less than 1, say 0 0.01, you want to convert that number into scientific notation, you need to have one point something. You're moving the decimal from 0 0.01, you're moving it to the right direction there. When you're moving the decimal point to the right direction, you're increasing the value there. And you cannot change the value when you use a different representation for the same number there. So you have to use a negative number to represent the power of 10. And it's going to be a negative number there. Okay. So this is very important. You've got to be able to um, use, you have to be able to use your calculator uh, to enter that notation. And sometimes, and depending on the setup of the calculator, there are sometimes the uh, the, uh, you will see different expressions there. In, on some calculators, and you will see 10 to the whatever exponential number of uh, power. Sometimes you will see a term of E, or sometimes double E, E and E there. So that E represents exponential number. There. So 10, well, whatever number with an E on your calculator, and uh, there's another, another number behind it, that's the that's exponential number. So since we're using different types of calculators, and uh, each person may have a different calculator there, it's very important that you know how to operate your calculator. Uh, ironically, uh, the calculators are getting so complicated, and we actually, in the math department on this campus there, we actually offer a course in teaching people how to use TI-83, TI-85. So uh, it shouldn't be that complicated. Uh, for the calculators that you're using here, uh, on this course there, it shouldn't be that complicated. Uh, complicated. However, it's very important that you know how to operate your calculator. Otherwise, uh, if you try to figure it out during the exam, you will run out of time. So that's very important there. Okay. So we introduced the scientific notation in the third learning objective. And uh, now, uh, the next, moving on to the next learning objective there, we want to do some calculations using, using scientific notation. Now, we know chemistry is a physical science. Okay. And uh, when we do experiments there, we are always measuring things. The measured quantity sometimes is in one unit, but in reality, we may need it to be in another unit. Here. How do you convert from one unit to the other? Or another fundamental question there is that when you measure something, you need to use an equipment. How accurate is the equipment? How many decimal places can you actually get on one set of equipment there, say rulers, versus veneer caliber, the digital veneer caliber. They may be able to measure to different number of decimal places there, meaning they have different accuracy there. How do you decide how many digits you're going to keep when you finish your measurement? That's the topic of secret configures there. That's something that we will be doing in the laboratory in uh, experiment number two. Uh, we were supposed to uh, start working on that uh, problem yesterday in the lab there, but I figure it's probably uh, we're probably going to be better off if we start talking about the SIGFIC in class before we ask you to do uh, new works related to SIGFIC. So in this particular learning objective there, we will look at what 